Hello and welcome to Give and Take, The Virtues in Life. And today's topic is Become Integrated. But before we go over to our wonderful guest who will introduce herself, I do want to talk, I do want to mention I was in India for a month. And I went there to uh, go on a, um, I went to a, a conference and I had written a paper uh, for this um, institute in India and um, it's the, um, I forgot what the name is right now, I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, I did that and so I went to uh, Mumbai and, uh, you know, Jaipur and I went to um, Ahmedabad and I went to Mount Abu. And so in Mount Abu is a spiritual university that I've spoken about for some time now from the very beginning. Um, it's the Brahma Kumaris Real World Spiritual University. It's the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University. And so um, I went there and I had an amazing time. It was full of knowledge and full of magic. So I don't want to go too much into detail because I want to hear what our wonderful guest has to say. So I'm going to let her introduce herself now. So welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for having me here. Yes, and your name is? I'm Christine LaPlante. Um, I'm a licensed mental health counselor and an author and musician, mm -hmm. um, a mom, a partner. Multi-talented. Multi-talented, yes. yes Sometimes it's hard to focus it down, but yeah. It, it's not necessary. <laughs> Remember I told you about, yes. we were talking about packaging it. That's right. And so you package it in it, whatever form it is, mm -hmm. but it's all you. It is all me. So yeah. you're sharing all of your talents for self, of course, mm -hmm. first, and then you're sharing with others. So fantastic. So wherever you want to start, Christine, is fine. Okay. Um, I mean, we talked a little bit about Become Integrated. So mm -hmm. Become Integrated is a concept that my partner and I um, realized that we are not ever fully formed in this life. And so instead of um, reaching an end point, we wanted to continue to become. And so like that. many years ago, we, we started teaching classes mm -hmm. to people on how to further deepen and widen. You know, right. so it wasn't just go deep, go you know to the dark, to the shadow, address all those things. It was also expand, mm -hmm. and for every bit we expand, there is so much more to learn. Right. You know, um, and so. you're expanding some more here. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> quite literally expanding. So let's yes. introduce us this little one that's not quite here yet. Yes, yes. This is um, this is she's to be born in July. Oh, lovely. Her name is Artemis. Artemis. Um, yeah. And Artemis means she's uh, the Greek goddess of the hunt. Okay. Um, but also protects people in oh. uh, women in in labor. Lovely. Uh, she's the twin sister of Apollo, and she oh. her first midwifing job was actually to help her mother give birth to her twin brother. How lovely. Yeah. So we'll see what she manifests in this yes. realm, in this world this time. So saying how she delayed this interview, right, by yes. a couple of months. Yeah. So she could be she seen. She to be seen. <laughs> yes. So now she's she's being seen, yeah. and she'll see it when she comes out. Yeah. So it's wonderful, and it's we've seen the importance of giving a good name. Yeah because I think nonchalantly, without really realizing, we've given names to people, we've had names ourselves that would really had no meaning. Yeah. And so there has to be a purpose and a meaning behind everything. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Christine, so go ahead, continue with your wonderful Become Integrated sure. uh, mission. Um, so I think as, as we continue and as I continued, mm -hmm. I realized that, um, uh, you know, let me just say that when I was young, I wanted to write poetry and play music and work with little kids. And a lot of school taught me that I had to pick one. Mm -hmm. You know, right. um, I played multiple instruments. And mm -hmm. by the time I got to middle school or high school, it was mm -hmm. pick an instrument. You can't play all the instruments. Right. And so I kept asking, why not? Mm -hmm. Why can't I play Good. all of these? Good. Um, you know, and then going into my own therapy, mm -hmm. I had a great therapist who was like, screw that. Mm -hmm. You know, you are, you have all of these talents, embrace them all and Excellent. integrate them. Good. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, today I play music mm -hmm. in my private practice uh, with people who are going through trauma. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I work very specifically in, in sexual trauma mm -hmm. and, um, Good. and sexual health. I don't want to just say trauma because right. I'm not trauma focused. Mm -hmm. I am trauma informed and mm -hmm. there's a huge difference mm -hmm. um, for me anyway. 
way. Right. That, you know, to focus on something that is the pain and the anguish mm -hmm. um, versus being aware that it's there and shifting um, the person and their health. So I think we'll focus on that and mm -hmm. then what we'll do is we will use the music afterwards sure. to sort of bring it to another place. So like let's start, start on um, the uh, sexual, um, what did you call it? The sexual, sexual health. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, let's um, talk about that. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I did write a book after mm -hmm. about 12 years. Mm -hmm. Here, I can mm -hmm. show you. You could hold that book. up, yes. Um, mm -hmm. This way. Here. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. this is my Sacred Not Secret, mm -hmm. which came after really working with people for about 12 years or so, mm -hmm. um, understanding a lot of shame-based uh, feelings around expressing themselves sexually, mm -hmm. being unable to talk with their partners or their lovers about what they want. Um, and so I realized that we are not even taught how to talk about sex. Mm -hmm. And so when I work with some of my colleagues, they send people to me, and sometimes it's simple as, can you say sex? Mm -hmm. And they can't. And so after six weeks, I send them back to their therapist, and they said, what'd you do? And I said, I just taught them how to say sex. Mm -hmm. You know, really, it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. um, and, and complex. Right. So this came from personal study, um, professional study, uh, going through traditional aspects of learning about our energy and our body, mm -hmm. that our mind and our body are not separate. Um, no. They're in relationship with each other, yes. and we have tended to pull them apart and treat them as if they are separate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from each other. And let's let's talk about talk about integrating. Let's yep. talk about the chakra part of, yes. of right. Yeah, let's yeah. go there. Right. So the chakras um, came in uh, to my study at that point, mm -hmm. and I began to see patterns of energetic development um, as well as human development. Um, so from an overlying. Western philosophy of you know psychological human development, I realized something like our root chakra, where we are learning at our very beginning of life about trust and mistrust, where we know that we are safe or we're not safe, which aligned with the root chakra. Mm -hmm. um, and so I began to recognize that our sacral chakra, which is next, um, tends to get incredibly damaged, especially in this kind of space that we're in here with our sexuality. Um, you know, so just an example, if you think about for a moment, and we'll be gender binary, you know, a little girl who's getting her diaper changed when she is very young and she finds her vulva, the adults around her tend to tell her not to touch that. It's dirty. Right. Move your hand right. away. Right. And there's a, there's mm -hmm. a kind of smack of the hand, so mm -hmm. there's a physical imprint and a, as well as a, an emotional imprint. For little boys, um, you know, tend to be laughed at. You know, if he ends up with an erection and he's little and he runs through the living room, the adults are laughing. And so we have diminished male sexuality to something that is a joke and female sexuality to something that is very shameful and that dirty. It's very damaging. Very damaging. And mm -hmm. so we're now, we're not learning trust, you know, or mistrust or safety. And we have this sacral area that gets very stuck in this developmental piece. Yes. And so we then expect people to be able to trust their gut, right? Which is the next, the solar plexus. Right. And how can somebody trust their gut if they haven't had a solid foundation and a healthy sexual oh, development, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. trust your gut to lead with your heart and choose mm -hmm. the people that are healthy for you, except you're already working on a system that's been mm -hmm. contaminated. Wow. Right, so we're choosing Great. that heart piece. Mm -hmm. And then we tell people to express their desires. Mm -hmm. Communication is key. I, I heard it even today. Communication is key. Communication is a key in relationship, but it's not the only one. Right. So we're expecting people to be able to voice those desires and that, that need, and mm -hmm. how can they even know what they need if their heart hasn't chosen the right person because right. their gut wasn't able to recognize that. Excellent. And we can mm -hmm. keep going where, you know, you have yeah, your, the your vision, chakra, your throat. Yep. Right, uh -huh, yep. the third eye. Yep. I was listening to a class this morning. It was talking about Swami yep. and how Swami is, is the divine being, and the mm -hmm. divine being comes and opens up Right. That's a true Swami that opens up that third eye. Yeah. But it, it's not just the third eye. All of these aspects yes. of the body, the whole chakra system has to be in alignment so you can really get the mm -hmm. fullness of that third eye. Right. And that's the expansion part. Exactly. You know, we are so hyper-focused on whatever we're being sold in the moment of mm -hmm. what is the system. Um, 
and then it disconnects us from spirit. Right? Right. So we have this crown piece that connects us to spirit and this root piece that connects us to the earth that and we so walk on. So there's a disconnect, it's not right. going to be fluid, it's not going to be pure, it's not going to be exactly. the way that it needs to be if it's discombobulated, right? Right. Excellent. Yes. Any more you want to say? This is really good. <laughs> no, it really well, it, is. It is part of, um, you know, we don't develop just once. Mm -hmm. We don't go through this process just once. We don't develop from you know, infant to adult mm -hmm. just one time, especially right. in our sexuality. It is constantly, that's the expansion piece. We get to go through all of these phases and then come back mm -hmm. and do it again mm -hmm. from a different level, right. from a different depth, from mm -hmm. a different, you know, ex expanded view. Mm -hmm. um, and we get to do this over and over and over right, again. Right. And so I learned these systems mm -hmm. and then learned, you know, Erickson's stages of development. Stages of development, yes. And I realized that they are, they're, they kind of coincide. Mm -hmm. And because I work mainly in Science sexual and spirituality, act, yeah, right? <laughs> one without the other. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and because I work mainly in the, the arena of sexual health, mm, you know, for good. me it is about sexual development and mm. going back and unlearning the right. things that we learned and right. healing the potential wounds that we had or recognizing we were never broken in the first place. This is great, Christine. Mm. Uh, I just want you to hold that sure. book up again and just put it towards this camera right here sure. so that they can see it. Yeah. And just read the title and, and, sure. and, and um, where people can buy it. Sacred Not Secret, An Integrated mm. Approach to Sexual Revolution. And it has um, an E in parentheses because I wanted it to be that we re-evolve. Mm. You know, so we're constantly evolving and evolving and evolving. Right. Um, and this is available on Amazon. You can look up Sacred Not Secret, An Integrated Approach to Sexual Revolution, or my name, Christine LaPlante, and it should come up on Amazon. Excellent. Mm. Good. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so... Anything else you want to talk about that? Because it's very, that was, you know, remember we had that discussion about, let's, let's, yeah, let's go I, there. I definitely want to let's go there. Let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been thinking about that yeah, since we yeah, talked. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, okay. And actually on the, on the drive here, I was thinking okay. about the story that I told yes, you. And, yes, um, I was I was trained in a, in a magical system Good. and Good. in mm. a traditional, you know, um, I guess, neo tradition. Mm -hmm. Um, and we would have classes on all sorts of things, on mm -hmm. ethics and, and spells and, and energy work and, and what's good and what's, you know, positive, negative energies is not necessarily good and bad. But our ethics class was the one that we really would end up spending a lot of time on. And our students loved this class. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about that as I was driving here that, you know, we have ethics for the physical world and we have consent Right. So we talk about consent. We talk about even if an ambulance comes right. and do you want medical care? Do you refuse medical care? You have the right to consent mm -hmm. unless you are um, unconscious and then there's implied consent. So you and I were talking about spiritual consent, energetic consent, mm -hmm. and which brought me to the story of a friend of mine yeah. um, where we were we were visiting a booth at a festival mm -hmm. and it had some great books in it. It felt um, a little weird, but the books were, were nice. So we decided we were gonna walk around the booth. Mm -hmm. And the person running the booth was where we realized there was some weird energy happening. Mm -hmm. And so we you know, took our leave and we went about the festival and um, we talked a little bit about what, where were we feeling it in our body and mm -hmm. you know, definitely in the gut area, right. definitely kind of right around the gut area, there was this tightness mm. and um, kind of shook it off. Mm -hmm. We went to the fire that night and we drummed and we danced and it was great. So we decided to go back the next day and this man um, at the booth looked at my friend and he said, I'm so glad that you came back. I made love to you in my mind last night. And both of us felt this almost immediate urge to, to purge, to vomit. Mm. Um, and we removed her from the booth mm. and I could see her pale, you know. And so we began to discuss this type of energetic consent and right. what happens when somebody is fantasizing about you or pleasuring themselves with you in their mind. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of energetic link does that then impose on you right. that you have no idea and you're not even consenting to? Exactly. And yeah. then to feel that and, and not that know what's right. right. You're right. saying, well, why am I feeling like this? Yeah. Why is this happening during a certain time? Or mm -hmm. what is that? What, I, I, I'm not feeling that. I don't right. have that urge. So why is this happening to me? And so here is one of the answers yeah. as to this, this violating in a spiritual way, and it's like, how do you even control that? That's a great question. <laughs> I mean, that I, we learn all sorts of grounding and shielding techniques, mm. but 
I think we'd like to believe we can walk through mm -hmm. our, our world without having to be constantly protected. Mm -hmm. And I think just like it's happening in the physical world mm -hmm. and more conversations of consent are happening, we need to also talk about that level of energetic yeah. consent. Yes, yes. You know, what is happening to people when, mm -hmm. you, when you do that? Mm -hmm. You know, you are violating them in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and there you is are. no recourse. You know, no. There, there's no way to say right. you're doing this. You know, and it reminds me of when people say, well, I feel so intensely for you. You have to feel that connection. Mm -hmm. Well, no, <laughs> it, it, it takes two people to create right. an intimate moment, but only one might feel it. You know, and I don't mm. think people really understand that, that if you're having this, even when you're making love to your partner, mm -hmm. if you're having this incredibly magical moment, they may not be. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily diminish your magical moment, but they may not be there with you. Mm -hmm. And so checking in about that is important. Right. But now take that outside of consent and you're having this intense emotional feeling and you're implying that um, or applying that to somebody else. Mm -hmm. and. There is this implied, well, you must feel it too because I feel it so intensely. Right. And that's not the case. And I don't think people understand that. So you being a licensed mental health practitioner, you would also, I'm sure you would see that sometimes people, it can affect them mentally. Oh, yeah. Because they have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had clients like that, that you've had to sort of work them through mm -hmm. it and to, to make them connect and see that it could be something like that that's sure. going on? Oh, great. You want to talk a little yeah. bit? You know, of it's, course, uh, the privacy, but you can be very yeah, generic. It, it is hard to um, pinpoint the energetic mm. connection. Um, I see a lot of it when I'm working with people who have been sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. And right. one of the first things I tell them is, I don't need to hear your details, you know, which is, which is not necessarily how other people work. But mm -hmm. I say, I don't need the details. It's you've told important. the police, you've told your parents, you've told, you know, mm -hmm. another counselor who right. came into the hospital, maybe mm -hmm. doing the kit. Um, you've told so many people, I don't need you to tell me your story again. If you feel it's relevant to the work that we're doing, right. please let the detail come out, mm -hmm. but I'm not here to ask you about Great. what happened. Great. I'm here to work on, on how you're going to move forward. Right. And so what I see, the first thing I say is, how far back did you wish yourself away? Mm -hmm. How far back did you go when you wished that that night had never happened or that day had never happened? Mm. You know, I wish I never went to the party. I wish I never met that friend. I wish I never went to that school. Right. I wish I was never born. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people go all the way back wow, to wishing wow. themselves out of existence. Mm -hmm. So that, using the body system, tells me that they have gone from this kind of crown chakra all the way back into the earth and want to be back in a womb space. Mm. And so when I work with them and the, the energetic connection, it is, where are you feeling that in your body right now? Mm -hmm. Some people express right here in the genital area and that it mm -hmm. feels like tentacles that have no grounding ability and they're mm -hmm. just angry. Right. Um, some people tell me they want to throw up mm -hmm. and, and, that, and then they try to push it back down. So I think we, we talked a little bit about that in our phone call too, yes. that our instinct almost um, is to take the energy and push it back down mm -hmm. when really we should be moving it up and out. Because, I mean, we want to purge that. Right. We want to get that out of the body. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm in, in sessions with people, it is a shaking. Sometimes they do want to throw up, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I have a bucket for them if they need it. <laughs> um, prepared. A lot of times it is, it is massive amounts of tears, but mm -hmm. with no words. It's cleansing. Very, very cleansing. Yeah. Um, and often they have to stand mm -hmm. because they feel kind of captured in here. So right. then we talk about where this person... Um, the difference between sexual assault, mm -hmm. um, the, the way that we word sexual assault is not a sexual act. It is a, an assault on our sexuality. It is assault it's on our assault core. on our sexuality. Right. Okay. So we start to separate that and realize that their sexual core has been assaulted, mm -hmm. not a sexual act. Mm -hmm. um, and so we separate that out and we start to look at the energetic pieces that this person that was assaulting them has mm -hmm. connected to them mm -hmm. and where in the body it comes out. Right. So that can translate mm -hmm. um, more so at... Um, events at festivals at places that I go to that have a more spiritual nature mm -hmm. where we can talk about right. this thing that feels like it's pressing on them right. you know, versus being physically assaulted. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's hard to bridge that gap between right. the worlds of you know, people walking in a way that they recognize the energetic impact mm -hmm. versus this physical thing happened. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I had mentioned to you because I have spoken to people about uh, you know, certain aspects of life. And I said, you don't realize that when you're with um, one person, how many people that they've been with, mm -hmm. and all that is energy. 
Mm -hmm. And so that energy comes to you. Sure. <laughs> and so you don't realize the depth of that and how it's all, and sometimes you'll feel a certain way, like, why am I feeling this way? Well, because there's something going on that you have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so this affects us also. And so I've, ch I've made a choice for over the past five years now to live a life of abstinence, mm -hmm. on, you know, celibacy, whatever you want to call it, because I have made that decision that I want to keep myself safe and spiritually safe. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, a, just not a fact of a physical safeness of, uh, you know, contracting a disease or something like that, but it's also spiritual, yeah. spiritually. And I, I, it's a, a good feeling for me. So I don't, whatever feeling I'm feeling, this is Cicely's feeling, not mm -hmm. anybody else's. Yeah. And so it's a choice that I've made. But if the, everybody has their own choice, their own part, and so it's good for somebody like you to guide them through the right process mm -hmm. to do things in the right manner because that's also a form of protection. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that you are, you know, coming to talk about this and share so that others can understand yeah. the depthness, the depthness, especially um, souls who have gone through trauma mm -hmm. in their life. It's, it's not... Um, it's not an easy journey, mm -hmm. but there is hope when, yeah. you know, for someone like you that goes beyond just the, so tell me what happened. Right. <laughs> yeah, again, <laughs> right. let's hear what happened again. Not necessary. No. And I said that to someone the other day that were going through something. I said, I don't need to know the details. Mm -hmm. Let's see where we can move on from here. So good for you. What else do you want to talk about? Uh, you know what? This will be the time now to bring that beautiful drum that you have here sure. to bring us to another place. Sure. So let's. Bring that out, so, we've got it. And, and explain a little bit about it. Sure. And it's so beautiful. Um, this is a hand pan. Mm -hmm. And um, the original instrument was called a hung drum, mm. made by Pangaea, mm -hmm. and means hand drum. Okay. And it's a sunken shell, mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, like a steel drum, but like it's sunken in a different, you know, different um, mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. And then instead of... Um, well, I can't, you know what, I'm not a maker, so I can't tell you how it's all right. made, yeah. but everything is hand hammered. Okay. So they have little um, kind of copper uh, rings that they hammer in the notes, mm. and so each one has its own scale. Okay. And there so are such amazing it. scales out there. Let's just make um, it. So, so yeah, I was going to say, if you, if you want to, <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can play a little bit oh, for please. you. Oh, please, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. And try to sing just a little bit. Um, but... This is one of the instruments I incorporate into my practice, especially mm -hmm. when people are feeling anxious. Mm -hmm. um, vibration is very powerful, mm -hmm. and this paired with um, voice tends to bring, shake out something that needs to nice. not be verbal, which okay. is very nice. Great. Okay. okay, so we'll just we'll play a little mm -hmm. bit.
lovely. Thank That's just you. a little bit for you. Yeah, thank you. That was beautiful. <laughs> um, we're actually getting close to the end. I can't right. believe it flew by. That's how great the interview was. They all are, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway, just what you, if you could mention your uh, sites, like your Facebook sure. and your website, information people can get you. Yeah. Um, I'm on Facebook. I have two professional sites, which is uh, Christine LaPlant LMHC. Okay. And then... Um, Actually, three professional sites. The other is Become Integrated, mm -hmm. so Facebook slash Become Integrated, and Sacred Not Secret. So those are the three sites on uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I do have a Instagram. It's Mother Hearth, okay. Mother underscore Hearth, H-E-A-R-T-H, mm -hmm. and that is more for music and art and sculpting. Um, and then I have becomeintegrated.com, which is okay. my website, mm -hmm. which offers uh, some workshops, individual workshops, mm -hmm. workshops that I teach with my partner. Okay. Um, and then you'll see my travel schedule. So I'm about Excellent. to embark on the, the spring and summer, well, halfway through <laughs> the summer, because this little one is coming in July. So I'm done <laughs> about mid-June. And right. uh, then I'm going to get home and, and hunker down to, to oh. create our space to bring her into this world. So. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So... Um, what was I going to say to you now? So um, we're actually coming to the end of the show now, yes. and uh, it's everything just worked out perfectly the way it should be, and I'm glad that you came and shared that information because it will help many. So um, to my wonderful viewers, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in that mood today, right, Christine? <laughs> yes, in that mood of sharing and caring and loving and all that, so that's where I am. So anyway, thank you, Christine. Thank for you so much. I really appreciate it. And so to the wonderful viewers, your level of consciousness is the gateway to the future. Thank you.